Hi everyone, it is Elaine, your Friendly Learning Assistance teacher. I'm going to share with you some best practice around using your EA Wayfinder. The first pages, I just have extra visual stuff that I don't typically need, but it's there in an emergency, some stickers, you know, for grabbing quickly. The first section of my binder is called About Me, and this is where we have a preference profile of the student that we work with and we always start from a strengths-based perspective, so always write down all the things they like, the things they're good at. Really focus on that because we get more of what we look for. So if you're looking for positive behavior, you'll get more positive behavior. And then certainly um, we can notice things that are more difficult in the preference profile as well. Your schedule is the next section. Uh, weekly schedules, personal schedules, things like that. Um, there are a, a lot of different ways to do this. My preference is to go to the classroom teacher, get their schedule, and then make an adapted schedule in collaboration with the classroom teacher, which then informs my everyday practice of building the personal visual schedule for the child that we're working with. Uh, you use a visual schedule for non-readers, you use uh, words for kids that can read. And it's really important that you graduate them off of the picture schedules as soon as possible so that they are using this as a reading tool and then eventually they transition away from this and onto a digital format and or use the classroom visual, visual schedule. Next section is the IEP or behavior plan or safety plan or all of the above, also learning support plan. Um, in this one, it's just a, a blanked out version of another student's and I'm not going to go all the way through it, but I encourage you to go through to the objectives, highlight the objectives so that you know what it is we are hoping for the child to learn and know when that objective is supposed to be done. Typically, you'll see um, one of three. You'll see a social emotional learning piece. You'll see a numeracy piece and or a literacy piece. And we refer to the core competencies for those kinds of goals. Next section is incident report. You don't wanna spend a ton of time on these, um, but you do wanna notice three important parts when you're recording incidents. Um, you want to notice, after you've written the date and you know general comments, what was the antecedent, what was the behavior, and what was the consequence? And so really quickly, we could say on the 29th of October, we had a Halloween party, you know how that goes. There was hitting at lunch, and the duty sent the child to the office. Alternatively, you can get a checkbox, um, and this is the same kind of an idea where October the 29th, we had a Halloween party at lunch, resulting in a child kicking and hitting uh, to obtain attention, um, help, a preferred item, chocolate, and then they escaped the noisy environment, which was hard for them to deal with. The function was escape, gain attention, and acquire a tangible, which in this case is chocolate. Next section, record of service. Record of service is when we notice who comes into our room and why they're there. So if the person coming into our room is um, not there in our school community every day or, you know, we, we tend to notice it here. So I have a general one for the school counselor coming into the class on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I might notice that they are working on um, SEL, social emotional learning at the classroom level. So everybody gets this. Um, I would also notice that on October 29th, the occupational therapist came in and did a sensory profile with our student. So anytime anybody not of our school comes in, we notice it here. Super important that this happens. Next section, visuals. Um, I'm preaching to the choir, I know. Uh, there are excellent reasons to use visuals. I know that all the EAs at this school use visuals. I appreciate that so much. Um, but this is a great uh, visual from Kristen Weens on why we use visuals, and that should be in everybody's uh, white binder as well. These are some of my favorites. Um, break cards for intermediates. The I am working for cards. Social stories. We make them specifically with a, a child in mind, but we try and generalize them sometimes, or we might make them with pictures sometimes. Uh, the Incredible Five Point Scale is a book I have in my office that has really great um, visuals around what it looks like when you are one, two, three, four, five, and then there's social stories that are paired, uh, building emotional literacy with pictures, break cards for little ones, other ways of showing breaks, so those are some great ones. 
Um, the last section is assessments. You should have at least a numeracy assessment and a literacy assessment, or you know, at the very least, the, the literacy assessment um, if you are working uh, on a child's IEP in literacy, right? This student has an IEP goal for uh, working at a grade five level in a grade six class. Um, and this is what grade six targets are and grade five targets, so that you have a sense. Uh, numeracy is a stretch for this little guy, and so he's not working at grade level in numeracy. And so we just have, you know, comments from the learning assistance teacher about what we can focus on. And then a PM benchmark uh, that shows, you know, what he is doing in literacy, which is reading, 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 but not necessarily understanding anything. So those are the parts of a white binder. Please keep all of your data in the back of your white binder from previous years so that I can transfer it to assess at the end of the school year.